Hey fish friends, Zenzo with Tazawa Tanks, back with part three of the pros and cons of a 3D background in an African cichlid tank. Hope you enjoy this video. So um, I've made a couple of videos about the pros and cons of a 3D background, my experience. Um, if you've watched the other two videos, you know that I made my own custom 3D background. And I do have some other backgrounds, um, which I'll show in the video. But um, I made my own custom background for my um, African cichlid tank. Loved it, had a lot of um, enjoyment out of it, but also had some, some um, experiences that were not so great. And uh, that ultimately led me to the decision to take it out and put in a Universal Rocks 3D background, um, which you might be able to see over my shoulder, but I will be filming it shortly. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it's informative. hope you can learn from it. Um, I, think, I think it's always great to learn from other hobbyists and the mistakes that we've made and our experiences so that it's, it's easier for everyone else. So um, anyway, also uh, this t-shirt, I don't know if you can see all of it. Um, it says uh, Rift Lake Malawi on the very bottom, but this is uh, one of my African cichlid t-shirts. Um, this is made by a, a, another hobbyist. Um, his name is Sam Garcia, and uh, he has a Facebook page that I will uh, put in the description below. I'll put a link to it. And uh, he's an amazing artist, print work, um, you know, t-shirts, you know, clothing, etc. but also like if you want like a nice, um, you know, print for your wall, etc. He does some amazing work. So um, I will put a link to his um, Facebook page, which shows you some of his artwork, and then you can see some shopping options there. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, please uh, feel free to comment on it. Give me your feedback. Like if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't like it. If you don't like it, please let me know why, so that I can, of course, uh, make adjustments as I make future videos. So anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys soon. Okay, so um, earlier, well not earlier, but in another video, I said that I was going to uh, kind of make a video of me installing this background, and I decided not to, I actually started to, and it just became a much larger project than um, I anticipated as far as, you know, being able to film it in a timely manner, etc. But uh, really the process was um, me draining part of the tank like I'm doing a water change and um, after that I started to remove some of the rocks and decorations so that I could have easy access to the fish and then I had to remove my 3d background the one that I made and um, once I pulled that out I was able to catch the fish and uh, put them in a holding tank that I uh, threw an air stone in while I uh, went about the process of installing the uh, Universal Rocks background. A little bit about this background. Um, this is a 48 by 18 inch piece. So it's 48 inches long, 18 inches tall. Um, it is called the Kiyama. Kiyama or Kayama? I'm not quite sure how, they, how it's supposed to be pronounced, but it's K-I-A-M-A. -A. It's a Kayama background from Universal Rocks. And uh, it's a 3D background. Um, if you saw the video that I... Um, posted yesterday and I'll put a link to this video um, you can see the unboxing of that um, anyway so I installed the background and let me back up before I did that um, I did a little bit of customization to this background um, a couple of things that I did is I cut out a little section in the top right corner and um, covered that with some nylon mesh and that's kind of the overflow area where I have my overflow for my sump down below and what I was going to do is I was going to cut out some large holes um, in the uh, the rock face and also line that with nylon mesh to allow the um, water to pass through for my filtration because I have a canister filter on this um, in addition to the sump and I also have a hang on the back filter. So um, with those three different filtration systems I wanted to have adequate, adequate uh, water movement and water supply behind the background. And um, what I decided to do and what I, what I ended up doing is instead of cutting large holes in this background and uh, kind of um, losing the aesthetic value, I ended up um, taking a drill 
and drilling holes in the background where I wanted my original holes to be. So essentially I just turned the background into kind of a mesh in those certain areas. I used a, um, a an 11, no, what was it? It was a, uh, I think it was a 3 16 drill bit. So I think that's right around 4.7 millimeters if you're using a metric system. So, you know, pretty good size holes. And I put a lot of them um, in two areas. One where my canister filter um, um, uh, inlet is, and then also where my um, hang on the back inlet is. So I did uh, two different areas. And what I like about it is it's very inconspicuous. Um, even like in this video right now, you can't see it from this distance, but um, I'll uh, show a, a close-up photo of where those um, where those holes were drilled. So anyway, so um, after I uh, made those customizations, of course, I washed it thoroughly as, as um, you are suggested to do, and I um, then installed it. Um, it is one piece. It is flexible. Um, even though it's flexible, it still took a little bit of, of uh, muscle to uh, you know, get it um, in the right place, but I was able to do so without any problems. And um, once I installed the background, I hooked everything back up as far as filtration is concerned and then filled the tank back up and then added the fish. Um, the fish were going crazy for a while and uh, as you can imagine, it's you know quite a shock to be pulled from your tank, placed in a holding tank, and then put back in the tank after a water change and um, you know have a whole new environment. So what I did is I turned the lights off I covered the entire tank in a blanket, my Superman blanket, which you can see here. And uh, I just kind of let it uh, be dark for a couple of hours so that the fish had a chance to acclimate and settle down. It, you know they were they were fighting like crazy. Not I don't want to say fighting, but it was just uh, you know, anytime you um, pull all the fish from a tank and put that back in, there's kind of a um, a struggle for power, and the whole hierarchy thing needs to start all over again, and it's a different environment. So so anyway, so um, I did that, and uh, once um, I felt it was you know good enough time, I took the blanket off and the lights kicked on, and um, here it is. The tank's still a little bit cloudy. And that's because it was, uh, you know, a lot of uh, movement going on in the substrate, which is uh, aragonite and sand. But um, it started to clear up, so uh, hopefully within the next couple of hours it will become crystal clear. And with the three different types of filtration that I have that are offering biological, mechanical, and chemical with uh, purigen and carbon, um, I'm sure it'll clear up uh, very nicely. Uh, what I do like about this background is it feels like I have more fish. I don't have any more fish. I have the exact same amount of fish that I had before, um, except that now they're not hiding behind the background. So if you've seen my other videos, that background had caves and a large area for fish to hide behind. And, um, and I'll uh, put a, uh, a photo of that here, which is um, the background after, I've, after it's been pulled out of the tank. So anyway, so as I said, you know, uh, it feels like I have a lot more fish. There are fish that I normally never got a chance to see. So for example, the catfish that you see there uh, swimming along the background in the rocks there, that's a Synodontis, uh, Ypteris, Ypteris. It's uh, Featherfin Catfish is, is the other name that it's known by, or Squeaker, um, because of the noises that he sometimes make. But um, anyway, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a nice fish. Um, it was actually the very first fish that I had in this tank. Um, a long, long time ago. So I've seen it grow and I've really, in, you know, I enjoy it. I just, I never got a chance to see it because it was always hiding 
in the background um, of the uh, the other background that I had. So now with this, um, all of the fish are visible. Um, I'm sure some of them don't like it because they like the fact that they could hide and there's more, you know, right now with everything being new, you can see there's some aggression going on with the yellow labs. But even as, as an example, the yellow labs, I've got 11, I have nine yellow labs, but I have seven in this tank. And with the previous setup, I only would see two or three at a time because there would be several hiding in the background in their little cave areas. So again, now I have the visibility of seeing all the fish and uh, I really do enjoy that. So we'll see, um, you know, in, in the coming weeks, what kind of experiences I have uh, with this new background. But um, so far, I'm very pleased with the way that it looks. Um, in my opinion, it looks very realistic. Um, I do like the dimension that it offers. And I do like the fact that it's flexible and pliable and um, also that I was able to drill into it to um, customize it. The only thing I didn't, um, not that I don't like about it, but that didn't work for me is that they, the uh, background comes with these plastic clips. The plastic clips are really like, uh, it's almost like they're PVC pieces that were cut into rings and then split so that you could clip them on to the back of a tank. But if your tank has a rim, as this one does, and most of our tanks have rims, most glass tanks, um, it doesn't fit. So I ended up using some Fluval um, clips that I had for holding on the hoses for canister filters and that worked just fine. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Um, if you, I'll, I will put links to the other videos um, down below as well so that you can uh, see kind of uh, a more detailed video of uh, kind of the pros and cons of of having a 3D background in my experiences. But this is new, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, watching the fish and, and having the fish more visible. Eventually, some of these fish are going into another tank, and then fish that I have in another tank are going into this one. But uh, in the meantime, I will be able to enjoy these fish. Um, I'm not quite sure about the rocks that I have in there. All of those rocks on the bottom, as you can see, were rocks that I had previously. Um, I may end up taking those out or taking out some of them. I haven't decided yet, but for now I left them in there. They do have beneficial bacteria on the surfaces, so that was one of the reasons why I left them in. Um, because when I did take out the background, that's a huge um, surface area that had a lot of bacteria on it that I just pulled out of the tank. So, of course the filter stayed the same. I didn't change any of the, any of the filter material. Um, the substrate was the same. I didn't wipe down the glass, so there's a little bit of bacteria on there. Um, but there was a lot on that on that background that I pulled off. So I left the rocks in there for that purpose as well. So um, when the uh, the new background from Universal Rocks gets seeded with bacteria, then I'll have more options on deciding whether I want to pull out these rocks or not. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy my other videos. Um, again, uh, if you uh, like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, uh, please, you know, thumbs down and uh, please tell me why. So again, I, I know uh, what to change and what to fix. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.